Alright, hi guys. Um, this video is on the different hominin species um, that we're going to look at for this unit. Um, so just a few definitions from um, some of the last lessons. So we've got the form of magnum, uh, bipedal, vulgus angle, brow ridge, zygomatic arch, cranium, fossil, radiocarbon dating, and sexual dimorphism. Um, so take a few minutes, pause the video, and make sure that you know those the meanings, those definitions. Uh, bonus question down there for 6 million points. Uh, what are the names for the pieces of the Linnaean classific classification system? Um, a reminder is Kiwis play cricket on flat green surfaces. All right. So just a reminder, humans and chimpanzees shared their last common ancestor around 7 million years ago. Um, kind of moves around between 6 million and 7 million years ago as we get more fossils and our dating becomes more accurate. Um, and since that 7 million years ago, we've followed separate evolutionary paths. And this is the reason why you still see chimp chimpanzees. A lot of people say, oh, well, if there are still chimpanzees around, um, how did we evolve from them? We didn't evolve from them, we split. So we share about 98.8% of our DNA with chimpanzees and therefore they're our closest relatives among the primates. Please remember evolution is not linear. We don't go in this nice little um, linear progression from chimpanzee to this hairy guy, this less hairy guy, this guy with a, um, with a spear and then us, okay? It is not linear it is far more complicated than that it would be nice and easy if it was linear uh, but it's not this is kind of what it looks like um and remember we're always adding different things in um especially here we've got um Naledi, who is um a very new one to the tree that's been added they've been added um to the homo family um we're gonna start with this guy here and then we're going to talk a little bit about, um, of course, Lucy, um, the next one from Lucy, this one here. And then we're going to talk about um, Habilis, we'll talk about a couple of these ones as well, um, Erectus, um, Homo flor florensis, Neanderthals, and then of course we'll finish with uh, this guy here who should be kind of familiar, I hope. So that's kind of what our family tree looks like. And whenever we add, um, whenever new fossils are found, we kind of add to the to the tree and make it more more bushy. Really, we get all these new branches coming off. Okay, so we're going to start with Ardi. So Ardipithecus remidus, or Ardi, is much easier to remember. Lived somewhere between five point eight to four point four million years ago. Pretty small um, brain capacity, three hundred and fifty cc's. Um, or centimetres cubed, about the same as a chimpanzee, really. So some believe that Adi may be the long, long lost common ancestor between us and chimpanzees. Um, Adi was found in 1994, so still quite a new fossil. Um, it was earlier than Lucy, who we're going to look at next. Lucy was a long, for a long time thought to be the missing link between chimpanzees and humans. Um, so discovered 1994 in Ethiopia, Ethiopia. Um, Ardi pushed back the date of showing that when our ancestors became bipedal. Um, so this, the pelvis showed a mix of features that showed that it did spend a lot of time in trees still, but could also spend time walking on two legs. Um, if you look at the skull, it is a very um, big brow ridge still um, and kind of still has this muzzle that we see. Um, human, uh, Homo sapiens have a very flat face, we don't have a muzzle. Um, they also have very manipulative hands. They could have used some sort of tool or whether that tool was just a rock that they found. Uh, Lucy, 
Australopithecus afarensis, probably one of the most famous um, fossils when we're talking about human evolution, um, named Lucy because when they were busy digging up this fossil, um, the Beatles song, uh, was it Diamonds in the Sky with Lucy, uh, was playing in the background on the radio. So that's how she became known as Lucy. Uh, she was found in Africa in 1974. Um, so lived somewhere between 3.9 to 2.8 million years ago. Um, brain capacity ranges quite a bit from 375 to 550 um, cc's. A lot of that is to do with that they, that Lucy species has a very high um, amount of sexual dimorphism. So the males probably had the, the bigger brains and the females were a lot smaller and probably had the smaller brains. Um, their height was between one meter and 1.5 meters, so still pretty small. Um, lived in grasslands and woodlands of east, eastern and northeast Africa. Uh, Lucy was bipedal but still spent some time in trees um, and we can see that from her skeleton because they have very long arms. Um, probably spent time in trees maybe for protection, um, still hadn't developed enough to live just on, on the land. So staying with Australopithecus, um, this is Australopithecus africanus, um, dating to a 3 to 2.4 million years ago. Um, brain capacity of about 450 cc, so we're definitely getting bigger than chimpanzees but still nowhere near humans, or I should say homo sapiens. Uh, lived in grasslands and woodlands, uh, close to water sources in South Africa. So a larger cranium, so where the, where the brain actually sits was larger, um, and was bipedal. The jaw shape is more human-like as well in Africanus. Paranthropus boise. So remember, if you think about back to that tree a few minutes ago, these guys come off on a kind of different branch. Okay. Um, many scientists still believe that Paranthropus should actually be Australopithecus um, and not be their own different kind of going off to the side. Um, lived 2.3 to 1.2 million years ago. Uh, brain capacity of... 530 cc's. Oh, I'm still going. Oops, let's go back. Um, lived in, what did I say, wet grasslands of East Africa. Again, a very high degree of sexual dimorphism. So the males were a lot bigger than the females. Um, though I don't know how many uh, female or male fossils have been found. Uh, they had a very pronounced sagittal crest, which is this kind of bit that goes through the middle here of the skull, um, and a very large mandible. Though that picture there obviously doesn't show the mandible, which is the lower jaw. Um, so like I said, a lot of people still think they should be um, classified as Australopithecus and not be their own family. Another one to belong to this um, species is Paranthropus robustus. Robustus because, I mean, look at the size of uh, that skull and the jaws. Um, the jaws were to the, the um, very large mandible, so the lower jaw, try and use the correct words, um, was that big to, tr to help them with chewing their food, basically. They would have eaten a lot of really tough plant material and they needed to grind that up a lot. Um, to actually swallow it to and to try and digest it. Um, they wouldn't have probably got a lot of actually good stuff out of the plants um, and they needed that really big jaw to help chew, chew it. Um, brain's getting a bit bigger again, 521 cc's. Um, lived close to water and there were more open spaces at this time. Um, the environment had changed and they were found in South Africa. Um, so again, this one is very similar to F, um, Australopithecus africanus. And like I said, scientists believe that maybe they should actually be under the same kind of species and family. Um, the arms, when you look at the fossils of these guys, their arms are actually shorter than their legs. When we look at chimpanzees, 
Um, so chimpanzees spend some of their time in trees and some of their time bipedal. Um, their arms are actually quite long in comparison to their legs. In this one, we're actually starting to see the arms get shorter. And that's because they're becoming more bipedal, walking more. They don't need their arms to be knuckle walking. Dogs making noise. Uh, Homo habilis um, lived somewhere between 2.5 to 1.7 million years ago. Now, this is the first species, um, so the first Homo species we're looking at. Um, and there's a little bit more of a linear progression through these species. So these guys are um, definitely more related to us than the ones that we've looked at in the last couple of minutes. Um, Homo habilis, so the brain capacity, again, quite a big jump, 600 to 800 cc's. Um, but still the heights, we're still only looking at about 1.3 meters. I uh, lived in wet grasslands and open woodlands of East Africa. The muzzle has gone now. So the muzzle um, I talked about a few minutes ago in the last species um, has disappeared. They've got a wide parabolic jaw and they've got this rounded cranium. So it's a lot um, rounder than the other species before Homo habilis. Again, still lots of um, sexual dimorphism. Uh, the males were bigger than the females and that's why you get that quite big difference in brain capacity. Uh, their feet are very similar to modern humans so we know kind of by now that these guys are definitely bipedal um spend a lot more time walking than being in trees um our feet are designed to to be walking you know pretty much all the time um so homo habilis um his feet are very similar to ours um they use old one tools one of the first species that we've looked at that actually used a certain type of tool. So they didn't only use the tools, but they made the tools. Um, these guys were given the nickname of Handyman um, because of the tools that were found with them. So they made these tools as well. Homo agaster. Um, if you look at this, and if we go back to Homo habilis, this one actually looks more like us than what Homo agaster does. He's got that kind of big jaw again and this big kind of not quite so rounded cranium that we saw in Homo habilis. So Homo agaster, 1.9 to 1.4 million years ago. And again, a big range in brain capacity here, 870 to 1,000 cc's in brain capacity. Um, we've also increased their body size here. So usually with an increase in brain size, we also get an increase in body size. Um, lived in forest, grasslands and woodlands near water in East and South Africa. There is a lot of debate over whether um, Homo egaster and Homo erectus, who we're gonna look at in the moment, are actually the same species or not. Um, they would have overlapped in time but whether they are the same species or not is, is a bit hard to tell from what uh, fossils we've found. They have a bit more of a round, rounded cranium, smaller jaw, and they still have that very pronounced brow ridge. So your eyebrows are sticking out a lot more. Again, their legs are getting longer in comparison to their arms. And these guys use a newer kind of tool, the Arculean tools. And it's also said that they invented the hand axe which is pretty cool. Homo erectus. So these guys were species that have lived lived the longest, okay? They've lived quite a long time and will probably have lived longer than what Homo sapiens are actually going to live for. Um, it sounds a bit sad. Um, but they lived for a very long time. Um, so 1.9 million to 270,000 years ago. Still quite a big difference in brain capacity. And a lot of that is due to the fact that they live for so long, that they're, the beginning of their species might have had quite a smaller brain, but as they slowly evolved um, in the end, their brain capacity was up to um, 1,250 cc's. They lived in tropical forests and grasslands in Europe and Asia. So they're believed 
to be the first hominin to actually migrate out of Africa. And we're going to look at how they did that soon. They are definitely a descendant of Homo ergaster. And like I said before, some people believe that they're actually the same species. They still have quite a decent sized brow ridge, um, an elongated cranium, and again, that increased body size. So like I said, usually as the brain gets bigger, the body gets bigger because you need to power that big brain. These guys are also associated with the Arculean tools, stone tools, and they definitely had fire. Um, to make some of the stone tools, they needed fire. So whether they were creating fire or whether they were, say, capturing fire when there might have been lightning strikes and um, forest fires and they were somehow getting that with, with wood. So probably had, later on had tools that actually helped them to make fire. So here's one of the ones that we kind of have been recently discovered and kind of throw our um, hominin tree out of kilter a bit. So Homo florensis, I always pronounce that one wrong, um, also known as the hobbit. There's quite a bit of confusion over the dating for this one. For a little while they said that it may have lived up to 13,000 years ago. They've now pushed that date back. Um, so I've put in here 95,000 to 60,000 years ago. Um, that changes every now and then. They had quite a small brain size, 420 cc's. Um, they lived in a habitat similar to modern humans in East Southeast Asia. They lived on a small island, um, Island of Flores. Um, similar size to Lucy, but their brain was very developed, even though it was small. And if you look down here, they were found with upper Paleolithic tools, which were kind of like, you know, the fancy stone tools. So they were using these tools. There was also evidence of fire and cooking, which didn't come till quite a bit later on. So they've got this really small brain, but they had these fancy tools. Um, when she was first discovered, then and what was this, 2005, I remember, um, when it was discovered and added kind of to our year 13 evolution um, unit, just out of interest. Um, some believe she was dwarfed or an undernourished Homo erectus and had somehow managed to find her way onto this island when the water was low. Um, then the waters come back up and she they can't leave. So they stay on this island. So they've actually, because of the limited resources on this island, they've actually gotten smaller. But then their brain has also gotten smaller, but it's still very developed. Um, so some believe, yeah, she was, they were just dwarfed. Um, they were found with the remains of small rats. And um, the other thing about this um, island is that they've actually found pygmy elephant skeletons on this island, or fossils, I should say. Um, so it looked like most other organisms living on the island were dwarfed in some way, except for the giant rats that also lived there. So these giant rats would have kind of come up to the waist of um, this hobbit species which is kind of scary. So pygmy elephants that they would hunt, but also these giant rats that were big enough to kill this this um, species. So there's still a lot we don't really know about this one. Another new one, Homo naledi. Naledi, I should say. Uh, discovered only in 2013, so definitely a lot more research to be done on this one. She was discovered in South Africa um, down in a cave system. Um, we're going to look at this species a lot more, but they're not sure how they got into this cave system, um, whether they were hiding from something in there and got stuck and couldn't get back out. But they found quite a few um, full skeletons or fossils in this cave system. Um, so it looks like they were around somewhere, and again, the dating for this is all over the place, anywhere from 2 million years ago to as recent as 100,000 years ago. So there would have definitely been some overlap if that 100,000 years is correct. Definitely would have been some overlap between um, Naledi and Homo sapiens. Brain capacity is still quite small though, 450 to 650 cc's, um, but a little bit taller in height, 1.5 meters. The pelvis is very similar to Lucy, but the ankle bones show that this species was definitely bipedal 
and to get into the cave system, they would have needed to have been able to walk um, and crawl into some very small tight spaces. So overall, they were classified as Homo naledi because of the atomical structure and they were more human looking than the other species. So this is Homo naledi here. We have a look at this one. Um, so not much bigger in size um, than the hobbit that we were just talking about. Um, still got that same um, small, vein, small brain volume. The teeth are a little bit more human-like. So this is kind of going, we're saying that this is more recent and this is older. So, on to Homo Neanderthals now. Um, the dating, we found, there's been found um, lots and lots of um, Neanderthal fossils. So we're quite um, happy with the date that we've given these guys. 400,000 years ago to only 30,000 years ago. Definite overlap between us and these guys. So that at some time, there would have been both of these species wandering around. Um, we know that they definitely cross paths because we have Neanderthal DNA in our, in our DNA, um, depending on what part of the world you came from. Their brain size is 1450 cc, so quite large, actually a little bit larger than us. Uh, they lived in very similar habitats to what we do now in Western Asia and Europe. They survived a lot better than um, Homo sapiens did at the time in those colder areas. Uh, they had a large nose and a robust skeleton that would have been an adaption to the ice age that they were living in. The large nose was to help warm the cold air that they were breathing in in these habitats um, so that the cold wasn't so much of a problem for them. They had this thing called an occipital bun, which I'm going to have a look at in the next slide. Their burials showed evidence of cultural treatment of the dead. Um, so they were buried with, not only were they actually buried, but they were buried with possessions like jewellery. Um, they were buried with flowers. Um, they also had Mosterian and Upper Paleolithic tools. So they're really fancy ones again um, that would have taken a long time to make. Okay, so... If we compare here our Neanderthal skull, so this one on this side, with our modern human skull, this is the occipital bun here. Um, we don't have it. Ours is very smooth, um, but they had this big protrudence out the back there. Um, they also did still have that large brow ridge. Ours is pretty smooth. We have a forehead. These guys didn't really have a forehead they had this large brow ridge and then it kind of went straight back um we have a chin um some people more than others but one of the real class um real easy ways to see whether we're talking a modern human or an, um something like a neanderthal is that neanderthals have a very flat chin there's pretty much nothing there we have a pointy chin okay um, the main, if, if you kind of looked at a Neanderthal skull and a human skull, the main things you're going to look at are the brow ridge, this occipital bun at the back here, um, and whether they have a pointy chin or kind of a sloping, receding chin. And finally, we get to this guy, um, Homo sapiens, which is us. Uh, 200,000 years ago to present to us today. Brain capacity, like I said, smaller than Neanderthals. They actually had a larger brain capacity, 1,450. Um, Ours is 1,350 on average. Um, so we have a relatively large brain size. We have a globular cranium. So we kind of had this bubble of a cranium. Very reduced brow ridge. Obviously, um, some people have a slightly different brow ridge to others. We have quite a flat face, really. We don't have that muzzle or anything, and we have our chin. Our legs are longer than our arms. 
and that is because of the fact that we don't live in trees anymore. Um, we use um, Mosterian Upper Paleolithic tools and believe to be the first logical hunters. So rather than chasing after some animal until it got tired, um, we used logic and um, some of the evidence that has been found in fossils is that we might have um, pushed larger animals into into gullies where they couldn't get out. So we used logic to help with our hunting. Um, so that is us. So what was the driving force behind hominin evolution? What made us go from something like a chimpanzee to what we are today? One of the first things is environmental pressures. Um, we had an ice age right in the middle there, um, and the Neanderthals were actually better suited to living in those conditions, but somehow we survived and they didn't. Um, well before that ice age, um, we were losing trees, we were getting more open grasslands rather than rainforests. Another driving force is the advantage of actually walking on two legs. Once you are stopped knuckle walking, your arms are free and your arms are free to maybe carry a tool, to carry a spear, to carry the animal that you just killed. Um, there's a height advantage as well. Um, with an increased brain size, you start to get taller individuals. Um, another driving force behind evolution was the increasing brain size and the advantages that went with that. So um, what, you know, making different types of tools, speaking, um, all of that added to the brain increasing more. The tools helped us to get better food. We could now power a bigger brain, so the brain increased again. So those are our main driving forces, but we will look at those um, in more detail. All right, so that brings me to the end of looking at the different species. Like I said, we will go over some more, especially the newer ones like the hobbit species and um, Homo um, naledi, um, just because there's so much happening with those ones at the moment. All right, thank you guys.